Hey there, everyone. This is Chris McDonald. I'm going to turn on my video so you guys can see me. Hey there. Um, and we've got uh, James with me, and I think Matt and uh, Shelly, I believe, is on as well. Um, so we're going to wait for another minute or two and let more people join. We have a, a very large group today. Um, and so we've got a, a number of uh, race directors with us for this Timer Tip Tuesday. Uh, for those of you race directors that are also timers, every uh, just about every Tuesday we do a 20 to 30 minute talk on different features that um, run signups come up with for the race day tools. And so um, kind of like a lunch and learn um, layout. So today, um, since a lot of race directors also use the check-in app, we're going to go through how um, or, or the, the new features being, that have been released and also um, some of the tools that you can now use for volunteers. So it's a, a really neat feature. I think we still have a few more people joining, but we will go ahead and get started. Um, so before we get going, um, I'm going to go over some very quick overview uh, of new features. So there's three things that we're going to talk about, um, and this is mainly for the timers. Um, so, but some of you race directors might be able to use these features as well. Um, and that is one of the feature updates. If you go in on the back side of Run Sign Up under Race Day Check In and Check In Stats, you'll now see an additional button down here. And so what this button does is it downloads a bib assignment from check-in. This is any bib that's been assigned to that person. So if it somehow gets cleared out or something like that, um, it will still keep a, um, a final download of that data. Um, so you can go back. This is kind of like a, like a critical issue. If for some reason you have a critical issue, you can go back um, to anything that's been pushed up to the run sign-up level. Something else, um, under queued edits, some of you may have noticed that um, if your edit attempts ever got to four, it would kind of pause and not allow you to push up any more um, queued edits from that, from that uh, device. So this retry failed edits button will appear if you get to four edit attempts. And by doing that, you're resetting the edit attempts to zero. Um, which will allow you to push those up or begin trying to push those up um, one more time. And then the third thing, um, which I believe is in review right now and will be released in the next uh, day or so, and that is um, a, a download export function for the device. So that means if you have queued edits and for some crazy reason you're not able to get those edits off of the device you're now going to be able to export them off and um and email a uh, a file of those changes um to yourself so you will have record of them off of the device so with that being said we're going to get into our um timer tip tuesday so the first thing we're going to do uh, for some of you, this might be old hat, but we're going to go in through a, a, an intro into the check-in app. Um, then we're going to go directly into volunteer check-in, um, which is obviously a new feature. Um, we're then going to go into a deeper dive into the check-in app. So since we have so many race directors on that might not have used the check-in app, we wanted to make sure that we, um, we covered how to use the check-in app in its entirety. Um, and then some of the benefits, features, things like that, and then we'll answer questions. And with that being said, if you've not been on one of these GoToWebinars, you should have a toolbar on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, we do have three people answering questions, so feel free to, uh, to ask away as we go along. Um, and those uh, will be directly messaged back to you, those uh, answers. And if, if we're seeing a number of the same question, um, I'm going to get Matt to interrupt, and that way we can float it out to everyone, so that uh, so that we can discuss um, that that thing that seems to have a number of people confused. So, um, why should you change uh, to the check-in app? And, and again, this is a broad. We're going to go quickly through this. Um, athletes are expecting everything instantaneously, and so they're they're waiting later to register, and they're still expecting everything now. So. The old timeline 
Um, and for a lot of the uh, the race directors, you might not know this timeline. You just know that you are closing registration on Wednesday, unless we're talking, talking about turkey trots, and then you're still uh, closing registration maybe on Sunday or Monday. Um, but you're opening registration, then you're closing it on a Wednesday, you're exporting the registrations, maybe emailing it to your timer, you're, they're assigning the bib numbers, um, importing into the participant software, um, printing and putting the, the bib labels on the bibs, getting those bibs back to you. Um, then you guys are opening up packet pickup and you're using paper forms to change things. Um, and then you have to close down registration like 30 minutes before the race starts so that the timer or whomever is your data entry point can can get all that information entered into the system so that they have all that um, in there before the race starts. And then once um, once all the data is finally entered, then the timer hits their uh, their mythical moment of Zen where all the data is flowing, everything's where it should be, um, and they're timing the race and producing results. Um, so the new timeline is very different, and that's leaving registration open until you feel like closing it. Um, then sending a pre-event email with a QR code replacement tag. Um, so that way you can scan the QR codes with your check-in app to, uh, to more efficiently look that person up. And then turning on the check-in app at the run sign-up level, dynamically assigning bibs by QR code, um, pulling all that data into race day scoring, and then pushing the results up to run sign-up. So how do you set up the check-in app? So first things first, um, you're gonna go in on the run signup level under race day tools, race day check-in, and you're gonna click on the mobile app. And at this point, you, um, you will see, if you've never set this up, you will see a blank for shared password, a blank for password hint, and then enable and disable. Um, I usually suggest um, making your password something very easy, um, that you can share with volunteers and say it out loud and it's not really gonna, nobody's gonna have access to your bank password or something like that. And, and definitely don't use your run signup password. The password hint a lot of times is the actual password. So the reason why we suggest this is because if we on the race day team or the run signup team get a, a question from you, hey, something's, I'm, I'm having some concerns or, or I have a question about my check-in app, and what I'm seeing, um, we have to ask you your password if you don't have it in the password hint box. So again, make it super, super easy, like race one, two, three, question mark, or something like that. Just something that, that you're gonna remember, you can tell a volunteer, you can write it on a piece of paper um, and hand it to somebody else and it's not gonna be a big deal. So the enable and disable um, dates, you can enable that as early as you want to. Um, and I usually suggest disabling it the day after the event. Um, you can disable it, you know, as the event started. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, but the enable, if you, if you, uh, it set your enable check-in date to the, only the day of packet pickup, you can't find, it will not be searchable in the app. Like your event will not be searchable in the app. So I usually suggest um, saving the enable um, to like say today's date for a turkey trot because you wanna you wanna set this up well in advance you know two and a half weeks in advance. So once once you've done that now um, once you've gotten it set up now what you're gonna do is um, set up and using the check-in app for the volunteers. So now we've we've migrated off of the um, run sign up version and now we're going on to the app. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download the app from the app store. And so this is what you're looking for. You can search for um, race day check-in, you can search for run sign-up. You're looking for a green, two-tone green race day check-in button. You will need this on all of your devices that you plan on checking people in. And the beauty of this is you can scale it very quickly across multiple devices to, uh, to help hopefully uh, keep your cues at um, packet pickup low um, and keep your athletes both moving and happy. So at this point, and uh, hopefully you can see this, you're going to, this is the full, the full how-to of getting to uh, checking in your volunteers. You're gonna set up check-in, and then you're gonna go search for your event. So as soon as you go into the app, you're gonna search for the event. I put in my name, I see my event right there, I click on it. Now, for those of you that have been using the check-in app, um, if, you, if you upgrade to this newest version, 
which is coming out. Uh, well, this will happen right now, but the newest version should be coming out um, very soon. Um, and it will do this as well. You will get a pop-up that you've likely never seen before. And that is check-in type. And it'll say participants or volunteers. So this is our, our new screen here. So again, we're talking about the volunteer side initially. Um, and then we'll go, for those of you that want to learn more about the check-in app in its entirety, we'll go into the participant side as well. So you'll click on volunteers because again, we're going to go into the um, volunteer side. And then once you've done that, um, you'll want to click on settings. So you'll click on the three bars in the top left and go into settings and you'll have your settings. You'll have your presets and your configurations. This is very, very similar to the participant side. Um, so you can set these similar configurations on the volunteer side. And then once you've got your volunteer side and you've got your configuration set, then um, you'll go in and you'll be able to go in and check in your volunteers. So how do you do that? What are the settings to use this on the volunteer check-in side? So again, we're clicking on the three bars and then we're clicking on settings. So from here, we've got two different things, the presets and the configurations. You can either edit a preset by clicking on one, or you can click the green plus button and create a new preset. And so with doing that, you get to say a preset name, and you have three different options on the participant or the volunteer uh, display. And so with that, you can either show the last name, show the email, show their assigned task. So a lot of times email is not necessary, but you might want to see that last name or the assigned task. So you can toggle those off and on as you wish and hit save. After you hit save, you will see the volunteer preset here. Then you can go into configuration. If you don't have one set up, again, you can click that green plus button and it drops you into the configuration screen. So you can rename your configuration and then underneath each task. And again, um, so all of these volunteer tasks and everything like that are set up at the run signup level. So you will need to do that. Um, so the volunteer side is not going to, to do anything if you don't have volunteer um, sign up available at the run sign up level. Um, and so if you have um, tasks set up, you'll be able to determine presets if you have different presets for different tasks. So I just made some fake tasks like shirt handout, aid stations, and stuff bags. And so you can see I've got different presets set to, for different tasks. And then you can also show visibility. So let's say it, more than likely you're not gonna be stuffing bags on race day. So stuffing bags might be something that you're checking in volunteers for, you know, three or four or five days in advance. And so on race morning, you might not need to see that. So maybe this configuration is called race morning and you don't show stuffed bags. So you save that and now it's in the configuration. And then finally, once you've created the configurations, you can go to select configuration and you can go and it'll ask you which one on the dropdown and then you can select which one you want to use. So I picked crisp config, which is this setting right here. And then you save it, you can go back out and begin checking people in. So once you're back out and you're actually checking in these volunteers, you can click on, you know, test dad here. And these are two different ways you can look at it. So in this, this one, you have the email, obviously in this one, you did not show the email. Um, so this is, you, you would, you'd be looking at one of these two screens, not both. Um, I just wanted to show you different versions if you, if you toggle some of those off and on. Um, and so, all right, test ads here, we're gonna hit check-in. So we hit check-in and it gives us a checked-in um, and then you can hit back to volunteer list. And then you can also uncheck dad in if you want to. So the benefit here is if you aren't at volunteer check-in, you as a race director or you as a timer can actually pull this up on your phone and check out these summary reports um, or the summary and report of who all's um, checked in. So on the run signup level, you can go back and look at these. So if we go into the summary and, and some of you might not have actually used the volunteer function on the run signup level, but it's, it's a really neat thing to do. You can parse things out by time slots, by number of volunteers that have signed up for that, the number of 
people you need, how close to the max you are. You can have soft caps. And, you know, you can set priorities for these things. Um, and so you can see as people are signing up, we have we have two people for packet pickout, one for shirt handout um, uh, from 10 to 11, and one for a shirt handout in the gym from 11 to 12. And so you can see that we're at you know 50% of our our goal of two. And um, and I've checked these people in and out several times, which is why we have a, a high number. So normally you wouldn't see those uh, those elevated numbers, but you get a, a nice report of you still need more people in that. Uh, in that uh, category of volunteer. Um, and again, if you've not played around with the volunteer function, you can also set coordinators. And those coordinators can have access to shoot emails out to the people that are underneath them in the volunteer level. And um, you can run reports as to um, you know, who signed up for what task and things like that. So, and here is the report report. And again, you can see all of this information, the task, and the assignment date, and then um, the fact that they were, you know, checked in. So one was checked in today, and one was checked in a week ago. So that is um, the overall overarching view of the volunteer side. And so many people would say, okay, I've got the volunteer side, you know, down, but maybe I'm just checking in volunteers at the very beginning of packet pickup. Can I? Can I toggle back and forth? And the answer is absolutely. So at any time you can go to these three lines and you can go to switch modes and you don't have to click what you're on, it just switches to the other mode. So if you're on participant, it will go to volunteer. If you're on volunteer, it will go to participant. So all you have to do is click that um, switch modes and it will, um, it will switch you to the other mode. So with getting to the, uh, the end of the volunteer specific side. Are there, Matt, are there any questions that we need to, to float out that have been asked by multiple people? Yeah, there was a question um, just on um, the difference between presets and configurations. I think it'd be good to just explain the relationship between those two and exactly what they do again, because I think it's a point of confusion for a lot of folks. Sure, um, and, and we'll actually, for those of you that are gonna stick around, because after we get through this volunteer side, we're actually gonna go into the, the participant check-in side, and we use this um, nomenclature in the participant side as well. So um, the presets are uh, defined things that are gonna show up. Like, so if we don't wanna see, and, and there's not as many options in the volunteer side as in the, in the participant side, but, um, for instance, if you had a, um, if, if you wanted to have a preset um, because you had a task that was all, I'm trying to think of a good example, um, where you you needed the emails to display for some reason, or you needed um, you needed their assigned task to display for this specific purpose, um, what you could do is if you needed that information for shirt handout, but you didn't need it for aid stations you would have two separate um, two separate views of the volunteer record. So let's say for shirt handout that we had um, somebody register and, and we, we clicked on them in the participation or in the check-in app for, for volunteers. And if they're in shirt handout, whatever presets we have set up for ABC123, um, those presets are going to display for that shirt handout person. Same goes for somebody else who's who's volunteered for aid station. They are going to display in the test scenario. So this this display feature. Now, um, maybe you want your volunteers that are or, or your staff member who is who is checking in volunteers. You don't want them to see email addresses. So you create presets that none show email, but you want for your device, you want to be able to see that email when you go in. And so you would create in this scenario, you would create, you know, you would create a configure or a, a, a preset test, no email. And so that would be under here. And ABC123, no email, both of which have this unchecked. 
and then you would create a configuration that selects those no email options and you could save it as the configuration name volunteer no email and on the devices those volunteers are using to check in the other volunteers no emails would be displayed but you or your staff want to see that so you have a different configuration for your device again on the volunteer side it's it's not as uh, important yet. There will be you know, more features released as time goes on. Um, and so it will likely become more clear on the volunteer side. But um, if you're gonna be using this for participants as well, it will be very, very clear in a moment. Um, we'll go through like a 5K runner versus a fun runner, right? And so the fun runner, you're gonna say, skip the bib. And the 5K runner, you're going to say it's required to have a bid. And so you might have a volunteer configuration for the volunteer who's helping you out um, that they don't have access to edit or change anything. And then you might have a staff configuration that you and your team members have that you can edit things like um, the, the, their sex or their age or, or, their, um, or the race they're doing or something like that. Um, so it becomes a little bit more clear when we get into the uh, race side of it, where we have a lot more uh, preset options. Any others? I just think in general, Chris, um, definitely um, it's really exciting to see um, people have been using the participant side and they really understand that. And now while the whole world is starting to open up in terms of like this capability, of doing volunteers and so there's definitely uh, questions about like you know the platform and how do i set things up on the platform and how do i you know really start to use this part of run sign up maybe you haven't used this part of the run sign platform yet um so yeah i would definitely um you know explore um the learning areas and kind of maybe learn a little bit about the platform again what you're seeing today is just us using an app to do the check-in part of the volunteer platform. And that's really what he's showing you here. Um, so the scope of us showing you all the bells and whistles and how you set up assignments and how people sign up and all that um, would be covered in other material. Yep, and, and if you really wanna get some hands-on uh, information and training on that, um, I just wanna plug the, uh, the symposium in January down in Orlando. Um, it's a great place for both timers and um, race directors and nonprofits to to learn a lot about the platform and maximizing um, maximizing what you can do with it and leveraging that to make your event better, make more money, um, and get more participants. So, with that being said, I'm going to press on to the setup and use check-in app for participant. Now, um, for a lot of you that have used this a number of times, this is review, and so uh, completely understand if you roll off at this point. But for those of you that are joining us that have not spent a lot of time on the check-in app or have never played with the configurations or the, um, uh, the, the, the presets, this would be a really good uh, chance for you to see some, uh, some suggested uses and what does what. So um, we're gonna go ahead and press on again. This is very, very similar to the last one. Um, and that is you're gonna enable the app, you're gonna click on the event, this time you're gonna click on participants, go into settings, and then you're gonna change the presets and then go into check-in. So check-in and use. So one of the things that we suggest, and a lot of people don't take advantage of this, but um, one of the things we suggest as you're going into the app for the first time is clicking settings. And this is an older version. Um, I think you should be on 3.2.2. 12, I believe. Um, so uh, hopefully you're updating that. But as soon as you get in here, click on settings and click on change identifier. And once you change identifier, because if you're on an iPhone, it's going to default to RD check-in. Um, and it's going to go, it's going to show iOS RD check-in on all your reports. If you're on an Android, it's going to say um, Android RD check-in on all your reports. The benefit in changing this is that when you run the reports later, you can actually parse things out by device that someone was checked in on for the participant side. So, um, and you'll see what I mean as we go along. So um, again, change the identifier, hit save, and then you can go back out and, and check people in. So presets. So you're gonna go in to those top three lines at, at the top and go to settings. You can add a preset here. Now, for this event, we have a whole bunch of events. 
you can see we have an edit default preset and a number of these already have default preset there and I've already added a preset called test preset and I've selected those presets in the drop down so um, for this example we're going to require the bid so this is a 5k run where you're timing these people so if they check in and they don't have a bib number then we want it to stop we want it to error out we need for them to have a bib number so um, you also we're not doing group or team for this one and we're requiring a waiver so the require uh, waiver requirement is great if you've imported people into the race so 2021 this is actually a fantastic function why for this year because a whole lot of events got canceled last year and so you have a whole lot of people that maybe you didn't use the suggested way of getting people from the 2020 event to the 2021 event you just downloaded everybody and then imported them into 2021 um, instead of sending them like a reserved entry code for zero dollars or something like that so if you imported those people you don't have a waiver sign you do not have a waiver sign because all you did was you imported them in um, now you might have a 2020 waiver but you might need a 2021 waiver because maybe you have COVID language in there now. So by requiring that waiver, now when they go through, if they don't, if, if in run sign up, they do not have a waiver signed, they will actually see the waiver, accept the waiver and sign it with their finger and that will save to their participant record. Um, you can also click auto show camera on bib assignment. This is a great feature if you have QR codes on your bibs. So for a lot of this, you're gonna wanna talk to your timer and make sure that they can do the things that you wanna do and make sure you have a really, really good conversation about you know, your expectations and, um, and making sure that if both of you are, are comfortable with uh, rolling out you know, new, uh, new ways of doing things. Um, and so when you're done editing everything, you can click save in the top right. So there's a whole lot of options. These are all the preset options on there. So again, this is just an example of what I would do um, for just a super simple um, uh, 5K. So we would require the waiver, auto show camera on bib assignment because we're dynamically assigning with QR codes on the bib. Um, we're gonna show the bib number. We're gonna show that the waiver was signed. Um, and then we're gonna show age and gender. Um, and we're gonna show the giveaway item. If you have add-ons or something like that, you can show that. Um, if you have any other fields, um, you can show that as well. You can allow for uncheck ins and you can preserve the bib on event transfer. So that means if you're, they're transferring from the 5K to the 10K, you want them to keep that bib, you can make sure that that happens. And then at the very bottom, you have prevent duplicate bibs and validate bibs. So bib validation is if a bib is assigned to Jack um, and he decides not to run, that bib one, two, three, four does not go back into the bib pool if he goes in and cancels his registration or, or, or uh, issues a refund or something like that. The reason why you would wanna validate bibs is if you have um, personalized bibs, basically, or you've already labeled the bibs and it's you know pulling that label off is gonna ruin the bib. So um, if, if you don't have that um, and you don't wanna validate the bibs, that's fine, because that means if Jack decides, you know what, on Thursday, I'm not coming, um, I'd like to defer my entry, who gives them to defer. And so the next person still is able to utilize that, that bib that was assigned to him. So once you've saved that preset, that test preset will be right here at the bottom. And just because it's in this area does not mean it's set for your event. You do have to go and select which events you want to apply that preset. Now, people were asking, what, why would you have different presets? We talked. We talked about you know a 5k versus a fun run for some of you it might be a a triathlon that also has a 5k you know and so maybe you want to see that usat number on the triathlon but you don't need to see it for the 5k obviously um same thing with visible events at the bottom um the visible event side um it, you know if you have all these virtual events that you're not allowing people to come to pack a pickup for you can unclick those so it doesn't clutter up everything. Or when you're we're searching for somebody and they have a virtual record and a regular record, um, you're not getting both. You're only seeing the one for the physical event. So once you've selected all that, you would go down to the bottom 
And again, you have a couple more options. You can hide checked in participants and you can select what shows on the check in screen. So on the left side, bid number, on the right side, check in status. It's pretty normal on that end. And then you would click upload configuration. And so I would say, all right, my configuration is going to be my favorite configuration. And I'm going to hit save. So the beauty here is it's going to hit save, race configuration, upload to the cloud. Now, anyone, and I do mean anyone who goes in, so your volunteer number two or device number two, when they go in to the um, event for the check-in app, they can now go into settings, scroll to the very bottom, and they can upload the configuration that you made on the device number one. So you don't have, as long as you upload this configuration to the cloud, you don't have to do all that work for every device. Say you have 20 devices for a 10,000 person check-in, or a 10,000 person event that you need to check people in for. So all you have to do is this, this on one device, and then once it's uploaded in the cloud, you go on all the other devices, you still need to change the, the device ID on the home screen under settings, um, but then you can go directly into the configuration and select uh, use my favorite configuration right there at the bottom. Or let's say you fouled it up, you can delete it and upload a new configuration. So using the check-in app, so once you're in here, you're gonna be searching for people. You can also set it up so the camera shows automatically and you can send out a, an email to all the participants on like Tuesday or Wednesday um, that has the QR code replacement tag at the top. Um, if, you, if you need to learn how to do that, there are plenty of uh, help docs. Um, under help, uh, if you go to the top right of run sign up and click on your little icon, the very bottom of that drop down um, shows help, and you can search for replacement tags um, and learn how to use those in your emails that you send out to athletes. So we're going to click on Clark Kent here, clicked on him. So now we get all of his information, and he doesn't have a bib number. Well, when we hit check in, we set it to auto open the um, the camera. So here is the Race Day Technology Suite bib. And you can see I've got a pencil hiding this QR code. The reason behind that is because I physically can't take a picture fast enough because that's how fast it reads that QR code. So the moment I move that pencil, boom, it takes bib number 1002. So now I have to hit assign. The moment I hit assign, now it says Clark Kent is checked in and assigned bib number 1002. And I hit next participant. You can now see Clark Kent 1002 right there. So the benefits of using the check-in app. So it's quick, customizable. Um, like we talked about, you can easily scale it across multiple devices. Um, a lot of people are hesitant initially to use it. And I, I mean, if your events are still hesitant to use it, what I would say is keep doing what you're currently doing, but run this in parallel and show I've noticed, and again, like I, um, I really do feel like the check-in app is one of the best features that run sign up has ever made um it it makes packet pickup enjoyable um it's still you know chaos it's still craziness but you can enjoy it and you have a lot of data at your hands to review after the fact um and as much as some people think that it's going to be very very challenging to use the first time they use it they're like man this is intuitive like very very easy and this uh, dynamic BIP assignment features in terms of the scanning of bar or QR codes um, is fantastic. There's also reporting features that you can do by event and um, you can plan out your volunteer workloads on the, on the back end. And the best part about this for you race directors is it fully integrates with both run sign up and race day scoring. So um, for if your timer is using the entire race day suite, um, they're able, you're able to set them as the timer on step one of the race wizard. And if they're using um, uh, either race director or uh, race day scoring, this will automatically, they'll be able to automatically pull this down. So with race director, they have to manually pull it down, but they have access to it. With race day scoring, race day scoring is up and it auto syncs down to them. So it's super, super convenient. You kind of, you lose that volunteer that's jogging paper forms back and forth, which makes you know everybody's day a lot easier. So the waiver side of things, like we talked about, Silver Surfer is going to check in. Checking in, you can see that he does not have the waiver signed here. 
So please instruct the participant to sign the waiver using the signature error below. So they have to agree to this. So it'll pop up and they hit agree and then they can sign their name in the app. So you think, okay, great. It saves in the app, who cares? But it doesn't just save in the app. Saves here, checked in. And now if we go into the participant record on the back side of run sign up, we can see the silver server manage registration. We go in the race waiver. There's a signature, an image of that. It's signed on this date, and you can view the waiver that that person saw at that time, which is very, very important. So you can also set corral names in here. Um, so again, for those of you doing larger events or multi-sport events, where maybe you have like a wave of elites and then a wave of Clydesdale, or something like that, or you, um, you have swim caps or something like that, you can set those and it can help your um, volunteers know what they're supposed to give. So for this, this is just, you know, corral one for this, this event, but corral two is a blue bib for this other event. So it, it really just reinforces what the, uh, the volunteer is supposed to give out. You have quick reporting in app. So, for a lot of you race directors, you're not, um, oh, and timers for that matter, you're not at packet pickup the whole time. And so, so much of my day when I'm race directing or when I'm timing, um, I'm curious when that huge swarm of people is going to come. And so, maybe I'm at the finish line, you know, helping get set up or, or putting mats down or something like that. Um, and instead of having to text my lead at packet pickup, hey, guesstimate how many people you've had. I can now just open my phone to my version of the app on my phone and I can go into check-in stats and I can see, oh, well, I've got nine of 46. So we still have quite a few people to check in, you know, or if you use a multiplier and it's 4,600, oh, we've got 900 to 4,600. We've still got a lot of people to go. Um, but that also allows you to get in the right place mentally when you show up on race morning and you know that, um, Oh, we've already got 70% of people checked in. Like your your stress levels decrease immensely when you know you only have to check in 30% of the race population. Um, you know, on a on a smaller event. If it's a major event, obviously you're gonna <laughs> have a lot of work that morning. So you also have detailed reporting on the run sign-up level. And so um, it's kind of hard to see, but for this event, they had 4,523 of the 5,300 people checked in, and you can see these little tiny bar lines and then right up into the event day. But if you go in, you have a day by day breakdown of each device. And this is why we changed the device name. Now, if you go on the run sign up level and all you see is one big blue bar going up and back down, you say, well, why don't I have all the pretty colors like this? Well, it's because all of your devices are named the same. So I'm sure if I look around, there we are, this pink one, iOS RD check-in, boom, right there. So this pink right here is an unassigned, somebody forgot to go in and name their device. Um, so there's probably one or two more in Android RD check-in, this other, this other color. So these two right here are the ones that people forgot to go in. And so it takes, if you have 10 iPads out there that you're checking people in and you change none of their names, all the names are iOS RD check-in. And so all of them are gonna be one big blue line, they're all gonna go together. So um, I think we covered most everything very quickly, but I did wanna make sure we got a, a full rundown of um, the, the participant side of the check-in app. So with that being said, are there any additional questions? No. Um, so, Chris, the only um, one thing I did come up again, it is um, a new thing for the volunteer. And I just want to show real quickly. It's kind of a question that. Um, sorry, let me just get over to the screen here or you can bring it up if you have it. Um, I could do it real quick here. Um, the question is really about the volunteer mode and how it really works. Let me just show this real quick. OK. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Okay, uh, so 
what we're showing here are, um, as Chris was talking about, it's really the assignments. It's really like, you know, people signed up to do check-in, people signed up to do registration, people signed up to do the medical. Um, and so that's really what you're setting up on the platform. So, you know, it is possible that a same person could sign up to do multiple things. And so, yeah, what we're showing here in the list, these are really what you're seeing are assignments. Don't think of them as people, it's really assignments. And so when you go click on an assignment, you're checking somebody in for that assignment. And that's really what you're tracking. You're tracking, hey, I've got people that are doing medical. I've got people that are doing registration. I've got people that are doing um, you know, check-in. And so I'm really checking in that those people are signed to that task and I'm checking them in for that assignment. So that's really what we're doing with the volunteer. But I just really wanted to kind of cover the model about assignments. Yeah, and um, I'm just going through some of the questions that have just popped in. Um, let's see, uh, if the bibs don't have barcodes, you're absolutely able to enter those in manually. So um, you can type those in and let's see. Uh, we will be recording this uh, or it is being recorded and it will be sent out to everyone. Um, so any other... Uh, for for times when the internet is spotty or unavailable, is there a way to store data locally on the devices even if their phone dies? So um, number one, uh, if you're gonna have spotty internet um, and you know that in advance, you can still use the check-in app. However, and this is a big however, um, two parts to this. One, if you don't think you're gonna have good internet connection, do not, and I repeat, do not plan on doing dynamic bib assignment. You are cruising for a bruising if you do that because um, you do have to get that data off and it is just a lot of different variables that and things that can go wrong. Um, so if now if it just goes out or the device dies, um, everything will be saved on and will come back. So you can you can create a test event and you can per, put your, uh, you can go into the event itself and um, check in somebody, and you can see it checks in to run sign up. And then you can go in and um, turn on airplane mode, and you'll see a red bar that says no internet access. And you can check in a few more people. And so um, once you've done that, you, uh, it, you know, it's like, and then you can even turn your, turn your phone off at that point, um, and you can boot it back up. And if you go into queued edits, you will see all those changes in queued edits. And at that point, all you need to do is turn airplane mode um, off so that you're back connected to the internet and, um, and it will resync to run sign up. So if, if your phone dies, like sure, everything's gonna be on there, but if your phone's dead and your event's about to start, you know, you've got bigger fish to fry here because sure that data's on the phone, but the phone's dead. So um, my personal opinion is if you're at these races and let's say you have five lines and you either give out or you're asking people to use their devices, um, you need to have a lead that kind of oversees this and just spot checks people every once in a while. And, and maybe they have their own device that they can hand to volunteer number one. And they take volunteer number one's phone and just goes into queued edits and just double checks that there's nothing, you know, nothing going on. And then once they tell that nothing's going on, they take their phone back and hand them, they, they hand them their phone back. You know, they just pass it off. So there's no lag of losing a line uh, for check-in. And then the lead goes to volunteer number two or line number two does the same thing. So that way they're spot checking that there's no critical issues because if you just sit there and somebody's never been connected to the internet or or they, you know, something happens to their device, the last thing you want is to have them check in, you know, 500 people and then leave and they've been offline and they never know to go in and like sync the device because they, they shut down um, uh, the check-in app. Well, if the check-in app's closed, it's not gonna sync. It's still, all that data is still in the check-in app, but it's not gonna sync. So um, I would just strongly advise to have like a check-in and check-out procedure for your volunteers um, with their devices and um, just spot check that everything is, um, everything on their devices is, is working as it should be periodically. 
Let's see. Can you view the different events in the check-in app sort list by event? You can't sort by event. However, you can um, you can uh, toggle the view of the events off and on. Let's say you're having like a, a race festival where um, where Saturday is the the 10K um, and Sunday is the half, and you're not allowing anybody to check in on Friday for the half, only for the for the 10K or whatever I said was going to be on Saturday. You can turn off what events you see that day, um, and so you don't you don't even see that other event. So yes, you you can view participants by event, but it's it's based off of toggling the um, the the visibility of those events off and on. I think that covers just about all the questions. Um, so again, we really appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, it was really nice to have a lot of race directors on with the timers. Um, and if you have additional questions, feel free to, um, to reach out to your account manager um, or to send emails to info at runsignup.com. Uh, if you're a timer, um, you know, reach out to the race day team um, if you have specific questions. And then also, if you've not checked it out, um, Run Sign Up has a great YouTube channel with just hours and hours of content on just about every topic that you could possibly imagine um, to help you have a successful uh, race day. So thanks so much for joining us today and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing some of you guys uh, at the uh, symposium in January. Take care. Mm -hmm.